In this video, we're going to be going over compound formation, and this is our part 2 video inside of chemistry chapter 2. And specifically, we're also going to talk about binary molecular compounds inside of this video. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to talk about is what is binary compounds in general. So binary compounds are composed of two different elements. So an example of this could be sodium chloride and also nitrogen dioxide. So sodium chloride is an ACL, so that means that it's combined with sodium and chlorides, which is two different elements. And then for nitrogen dioxide, it's nitrogen and oxygen, so those are also two different elements. So binary compounds are basically just two different elements combined together. So what is not a binary compound? So binary compounds are not compounds that contain a more than two elements, such as sodium nitrate. So in this case, sodium nitrate is not a binary compound because it contains of more than two elements. And in this case, we have sodium, which is Na, we have N, which is nitrogen, and we also have oxygen. So in this case, sodium nitrate has three elements, which means it's not a binary compound. So in conclusion, binary compounds contain of two different elements. And specifically in this video, as we said, we're going to talk about binary molecular compounds. And in our next video, we're going to talk about ionic, binary ionic compounds. So make sure you also watch that video out to see the difference between binary molecular compounds and binary ionic compounds. So specifically for binary molecular compounds, these are specifically consisting of two different non-metallic elements. So and also these binary molecular compounds are formed by the covalent bonding between these non-metal atoms. So when two non-metals, when they join together, then they become binary molecular compounds. Because as we said before, molecular compounds are formed when there's two non-metals. So binary molecular compounds is when there's two non-metals that are different elements. And a perfect example of this is carbon dioxide. Both carbon and oxygen, they're both non-metals. And when they combine, they become a binary molecular compound. So now what is the difference between binary compounds and binary molecular compounds? So we can think of this as binary compounds, first of all, is like the tip of a mountain. So binary compounds is the biggest, and then it branches off into two different sections. And one of the sections are binary molecular compounds, and the other section is binary ionic compounds. So we're gonna cover over binary ionic compounds in the next video, but for binary molecular compounds, we're gonna see the difference between that and also binary compounds. So the elements involved inside of a binary compound can be any two elements, can be metals or non-metals, or one of each. But for binary molecular compounds, they have to specifically be two non-metallic elements. So now for the type of bonding, inside of binary compounds, they can be ionic, which means that it's metals and non-metals, or they can also be covalent bonding, which means that there's two non-metals. And for the binary molecular compound, it's two of the non-metals sharing electrons with each other. So now we're going to look at some examples for both of them. So for binary compounds, we have sodium chloride and nitrogen dioxide. And then for binary molecular compounds, we have carbon dioxide and water. So for the naming suffix, so in binary compounds, it generally ends with IDE regardless of the bonding type. And inside of binary molecular compounds, it ends with IDE for the second element. So once you see IDE for the second element inside of any type of formula you can see, then you know that it's going to be a binary molecular compound as because this is the naming suffix that is ruled to the binary molecular compounds. So now for the naming prefix in binary compounds, it's not typically used, but inside of binary molecular compounds, they do use prefixes to indicate the number such as mono, Die, and we're going to look at some examples of these later on in this video. And for the position on the periodic table, it's not specifically defined because it can be combined with many different things around the periodic table. But for the binary molecular, the first element is usually farther to the left on the periodic table. So this is the difference between binary compounds and binary molecular compounds. And one thing to note is while all binary molecular compounds are binary compounds, since they consist of two elements, that doesn't mean that all binary compounds are binary molecular compounds. And this is because there's also binary ionic compounds, and as we said before, we're going to cover that in our next video. So now we're going to look at the naming of oxides of nitrogen. Once nitrogen is also combined with oxygen, then it becomes a binary molecular compound. So the formula for just NO, which is nitrogen monoxide, which is just nitrogen plus one oxygen, so one nitrogen and one oxygen, they become 
nitrogen monoxide and we get this mono because the second name only has one so it becomes nitrogen monoxide the common name for it is nitric oxide and it helps to maintain blood pressure and also pollutant from the vehicle exhaust and 2o which is dinitrogen monoxide since there is a two we represent this as di so it'd be dinitrogen monoxide since the o is only one so that's why we get dinitrogen monoxide the common name for this is nitrous oxide and it's usually also known as laughing gas so now for NO2, which is nitrogen dioxide, there is no common name for it and it looks like a brown gas and is used to manufacture nitric acid. So now for N2O3, so since the N has a 2, it means dinitrogen and the O has a 3, it's trioxide. So dinitrogen trioxide is the systematic name and there is no common name and it's a deep blue liquid. Now for N2O4, so N2 means dinitrogen and O4 means tetra. So dinitrogen tetraoxide is the systematic name. There is no common name and it is usually used in rocket fuels. And for the next final formula, we have N2O5, which is dinitrogen pentaoxide. That's the systematic name and there is no common name and usually dissolves in water to form nitric acid. So this table lists the formulas, systematic names and common names, if any, and some comments on the properties or uses of each nitrogen oxide. So nitrogen and oxygen is a perfect example of binary molecular compounds, so that's why we covered it inside of this video. So now we're going to go over some practice problems to see if we're able to understand what we covered in this video. So for our question number one, we need to write the name of each of the following molecular compounds. So feel free to pull up your periodic table and try this out for yourself and feel free to pause the video if needed. So now we're going to go in the answers for all these. So SO2, so we know that S is sulfur and O is oxygen. So this should be sulfur dioxide. For our second one, we have SO3. So S, we know that it's sulfur and oxygen. We already know that it's that. And since there's three, then this should be trioxide. So it should be sulfur trioxide. For the third one, we have oxygen and fluorine. So it should be oxygen difluoride. So for the last one, we have O2, F2, which means dioxygen difluoride. So let's just check the answers to see if we're right. So for A, SO2 is sulfur dioxide. For SO3, we have sulfur trioxide. For OF2, we have oxygen difluoride. And for O2F2, we have dioxygen difluoride. So now this is our second practice problem. So write the formula for each of the following molecular compounds. So first one, we have sulfur difluoride. Then we have sulfur tetrafluoride. Then we have sulfur hexafluoride and disulfur difluoride. So once again, feel free to pause the video and try these out for yourself. So for the solution, for sulfur difluoride, we have SF2. For sulfur tetrafluoride, we have SF4 because sulfur stays as S. And then since there's tetra, that means we know that it's 4. And then it's fluoride, so SF4. Then for sulfur hexafluoride, we know that hexa means 6. So sulfur, which is S and then fluoride, so SF6. And then finally, we have disulfur difluoride, which means that there's two sulfur and two fluorides. So it'll be S2, F2. And finally, for our last practice problem, write the name of each of the following molecular compounds. So for A, we have CCl4. For B, we have SF2. C, we have CO. For D, we have PCl5. I'll give once again, feel free to pause the video and try to solve these on your own. So for the solution, so C, Cl4, so we know that C by itself is carbon and Cl is chloride and 4, that means it's going to be tetra, so carbon, tetra, chloride. And then for our next one, which is B, we have SF2, so sulfur, difluoride. For C, we have just CO, which is carbon. And then remember that the second one says this a binary molecular compound. We need to add mono, so it would be carbon monoxide. And then for the last one, P, which is phosphorus, and then Cl, which is chloride. And there's a five, so there's penta in there. So it's gonna be phosphorus pentachloride. So that summarizes all the practice problems for this video. And also feel free to comment the score that you got on these quizzes inside of the comment section below. So just as a quick summary for this video, we talked about binary compounds and binary molecular compounds, and we went over some practice problems. And for our upcoming content, we're gonna talk about binary ionic compounds. 
So thank you so much for watching. Try to be useful and we'll see you guys in our next chemistry video.